Hi, I'm Peter from Aviation Weather. This is a quick overview on how to use this site. You'll immediately recognize this is a basic Google Map type of application. You can drag it around up and down. You can also zoom in and zoom out uh, using these uh, buttons at the upper left hand corner. You'll also notice that we've added this thick gray circle around an area and it's within this area that we query for current weather information. This weather data is live and from authoritative sources, primarily NOAA, the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. NOAA forwards current data from about 4,000 weather stations around the world. And if I were to try to display all of that information at once, your browser would collapse. So let's take a look inside this circle to see what kind of information is getting displayed. What you see is a bunch of light blue-green markers with darker blue, green, and sometimes red symbols on them. Each of these are METARs, showing you current weather information at, at uh, rep the current lo reporting locations, uh, primarily airports. The color of the symbol tells me the flight category, such as green for VFR, blue for marginal VFR, which is going to be lower ceilings and, and uh, reduce visibility. Uh, red will be for IFR, and magenta you'll see for uh, low IFR conditions. The the symbol uh, on top of the or the symbol on top of the METAR, uh, the squares and the circles, uh, tell me the greatest reported cloud coverage. So solid, such as up here in Virginia Beach, tells me that it's an overcast condition. Um, the open squares such as much of the rest of this area is going to be uh, clear skies or clear reported up to 12,000 feet and um, the partially filled symbols are going to tell me whether it's scattered or, or few, uh, few clouds, this kind of information. Um, now you can easily see more detailed information about the METAR by mousing over, not clicking, just moving the mouse over these different circles. Um, and we'll get to the, what kind of information is actually shown, but I want to show you how it's very easy to see a large amount of information for these different sites. Also what you'll see on the far right is as I mouse over a particular uh, place, if I have one, I'll go ahead and pop up the, uh, uh, an aerial photo of that uh, airport. Now if you've got an aerial photo that I can use, do please feel free to send it to me. I'd, I'd love to have a, a full set of uh, airports. Now, if you want to see the detailed information for any of these things, just mousing over these symbols, as I've shown you, you you'll, you'll get to it real quickly. But as you move the mouse, that information goes away. So you can't really cut and paste it or, uh, or, or compare information. Um, so that pop-up windows will disappear. Now, if you're looking for the details, you can make that pop-up window sticky so it won't disappear. All you have to do is click on the METAR. And so if I click on this one, for example, it's now stuck, and as I move the mouse around, it's not going to change that box in the upper left-hand window. So we can look at that at, at uh, a lot more detail. So let me zoom in on that, and we can see what's in there. You'll see I always include the actual the uh, original uh, encoded METAR, so you can read that in full. Um, I've quickly decoded them, and you'll get uh, pretty comfortable in reading these as well to see the uh, information we've got here so the flight category, wind conditions, sky conditions, this kind of thing so pretty much standard kinds of things. Now I like flying at night so I've also calculated what the sunrise and sunset times are as well as the moon information and phase information so useful information there. If we have enough information uh, we can also calculate the density altitude which I've done here it's a, something below sea level um, obviously we've got the elevation from the site, but in order to calculate the density altitude I need uh, a, a few more pieces of information. Um, I've also got a, uh, a link to the uh, FAA um, uh, airport facility directory. These are pulled directly from the FAA. Um, so you know you're going to get a current version of that if I bring that up real quickly. Um, so it'll be the actual page out of the uh, uh, AFD for that particular location. So really easy to do. The other thing we end up doing is, um, uh, as you can see here, I'll include telephone numbers. If they've got an ATIS or an AWAS that's uh, uh, available via the telephone, I'll also include its um, 
uh, a frequency, you might want to write that down to get the weather information at that location. Um, where it's a telephone number, I may include the Skype button. If your uh, computer is Skype equipped, equipped, you can click on that and immediately call that telephone number. You can hear it live uh, right now. Um, the other thing we do is we do include a link to the previous 12 hours of METARS and that allows you to uh, get information, trending information. So if I click here it goes back to uh, NOAA and pulls up the previous 12 hours. So this is going to be the most recent to be uh, uh, going back in history. Uh, in this case it's really easy to see and this is why I like uh, this, this kind of a form of METAR. It's really easy to see that the weather doesn't seem to have changed a whole lot for the past few hours. So it's been uh, pretty good visibility and clear. Um, so good, good seeing what's, uh, what's been going on here. Uh, let's see what else we have to do. Oh yeah, so if you want to make the box go away, or actually before you go away, if you want to see different information, you know how I clicked on it once to get that information. If I click on the other ones, then I'll switch or I'll cycle through the different METARs that I can see here. So I can go through them all and see the kind of information here. Um, the other thing to be aware of is this number. It's a time at the end of the, the, the first line. And that tells me the time that the information was actually received. Um, the thing to be looking out for is that sometimes I'll put up a little warning symbol. So if I receive a METAR that's more than an hour old, uh, I'll put that up there so it'll highlight uh, immediately to you that it may be an old, old set of information. You might want to you know, look at it a little more, uh, a little more carefully. Um, now, once you're finished with this, you can just click this box right here where it says click and that'll re-enable the mouse over so that it moves very quickly so you can see the information uh, are rolling over. So, pretty cool, huh? So at this point you probably have uh, one of three thoughts right now. First is, what if I don't live at Kitty Hawk? Second is, well, there's a lot more weather than just a bunch of METARs, and let's face it, everybody can do METARs. Or third, oops, I'm on the wrong website. Can't help you with the third one, but uh, fortunately for the first two, uh, here, here's some uh, uh, a couple of thoughts for you. I'll cover the details in another vi video, but briefly note the white go-to bar at the top of the screen. Um, type in any location and the map is going to move that gray circle to somewhere else. So if I move to uh, Chicago ORD, um, it's going to move that circle and populate that information. Ooh, Chicago's got some great weather there. So you can see what the IFR and this marginal IFR weather looks like here around uh, Chicago. Um, the second thing you should note, so in addition to the go-to bar at the top, note that there I've got this menu bar here, this blue menu bar, and uh, just above this map. And notice this cleverly worded help menu, and the very first thing here is show tool tips. And so by turning it off, that's probably the way to use it most of the time. But for now, do turn it on, and you'll get a lot of information on uh, what each of these menu items uh, covers. And you'll see I've basically uh, divided this down into a couple of sections so that the first menu is covering weather. This is showing me all sort of real-time live weather information, flight restrictions, TFRs, this kind of thing. And you can see the kind of detail that I'll show you what, what, what's all available here. We'll go through those in more details later. The second one, view, isn't showing me weather, it's showing me more static information, sort of non-real-time things. So it can show me all where the airports are located, nav aids, air spaces, this kind of thing. So we'll cover those again uh, in, in a bit. The third item is a bunch of reports. This is going to be allowing you to look up information. For example, if you don't remember the code for Chicago, uh, you can type in Chicago here, or this will bring in a form for Chicago and uh, it'll uh, give you a list of airports around Chicago, this kind of thing. And then finally, of course, help menu, which uh, includes the tool tips. It includes a way to contact us and lots of information like de how to decode the different uh, icons um, and the different uh, sources that we use to uh, display the information so you can feel comfortable that you're getting an accurate set of information. So why not just turn on the tool tips play around with the system a bit, get familiar with it, and then come back and check out the next video.